Welcome everybody, welcome back to another Morning Word. For those new to this, this is where I share a couple minute video really to share from my own personal Bible study. Why? Because I wanted to see your life go to the next level. And the reason I say that this is possible from reading the good book is that I've seen God do it in my life. He's taken me from here to here. And I believe that if we renew our mind, okay, because God says as a man think up in his heart, so is he, that if we can start to think like God, there is nothing that we can't achieve. So there's no valley that you can't come through and no mountaintop that you can't reach because there is nothing that is impossible for God, which means that there will be nothing that is impossible for you. So let's really get into this. I've got to say this, whatever I'm saying to you today, please study out for yourself. If it resonates, if it makes sense what we're saying, if, if what God is speaking makes sense, put it into action because only then will you see the fruits of God's wisdom um, by actually doing it, not just listening to it. So let's get into this. We're going to be reading and getting scripture inspiration from the book of 2 Samuel, which is the 10th book of the Bible. And we're reading from chapter 4, verse 1. And he reads this. When Ishboeth, son of Saul, heard that Abner had died in Hebron, he lost courage and all Israel, Israel became alarmed. Now I'm going to call this morning's word, where does your courage come from? Where does your courage come from? Now Abner, who, uh, who was Ishaboam, um, commander of armies, uh, had obviously been killed. And if you listen to uh, the other morning words, he was actually killed by uh, a, a army member of the nation of Judah. Now, when uh, Ishaboa heard that his commander had been killed, and obviously understand this, Abner was an incredible warrior and a well-respected commander. So there was an element of understanding that, oh my gosh, when my key commander's gone, there is probably an element of what to do next. But when uh, Abner you know, had died, Ishaboa had lost all courage, total courage. Not like He wasn't just concerned of who to replace his, his other commander. He had lost courage to such a point that the whole nation of Israel, imagine our whole country also lost courage as well. Now, it is illogical that a whole nation to lose courage of how they're, they're going to keep themselves safe, how they're going to you know, uh, protect themselves in times of war where the whole army was still in place. It was just one man. It was illogical. But sometimes we put all our confidence in one person, all our confidence in one thing. Uh, and it's illogical to think that your whole life is going to be messed up because of one event. And that's what the nation of Israel and the king Ishaboeth um, had to really deal with at that time as well. Now, the concern and the lesson that we can learn from this is like, like Ishaboeth, um, if you put your confidence in something that's temporary, if you put your confidence in people, if you put all your confidence in money, if you put all your confidence in your fame and your riches and things like that, then when they go, your confidence will also go. Because none of those things are permanent. You can lose a partner, you can lose friends, you can lose a business, you can lose your wealth, you can lose your fame. But there's one place where you can put your confidence that remains and has remained for ye thousands of years. You know, when everything else has come and gone, and that's God. And that's where, you know, God was trying to show Ishaboeth that, you know, I want you to put your faith in me. I want you to put your faith, not in Abner, in a great military leader, but who made Abner? Who gave him those skill sets? Who gave him the mindset? It was me. And that's what God was saying. I want you to put your trust in the person who actually gave you the things that you now have in trust, that you've now put confidence in. So that really leads me to the question of the morning. The question of the morning is this. Where do you get your courage and faith? Where are you getting your courage and faith? Here's the lesson today. If our faith and our courage should be based on things that can be taken or removed, if we base it on what is temporary, then our faith will be temporary. Our courage will be temporary. We must put our faith and our courage in things that are permanent. And I only personally know one thing that is permanent, and that's been God. For thousands of years, you know, whether people just, you know, said he's not real, real, uh, what name, this, the one thing I know is that God has remained constant throughout. No matter the backlash, no matter the hatred, God has remained faithful throughout. And I put my confidence in God. And that's what I'd really uh, say to you today. The action of the day is this, place your faith, your courage in God so it can be permanent, even if everything else is falling away. So God bless you. If you want to be strong in the midst of the storms, if you want to remain faithful no matter what, put your confidence in things that will remain faithful and strong all the way uh, throughout your life. So God bless you. As we always say with Gen Hope, God's gift to us is life. 
What we do with that life is I give back to God. Please subscribe to Gen TV where you get these videos Monday to Friday. But more importantly, please subscribe to, uh, share this video, not even subscribe, share this video with one person. Because if we can show someone how to put their faith and their courage in something that is permanent, these people will become a rock in our community. And if they become a rock in our community, they will change it. And by changing our community, we will go on to change the world. I truly believe that. So God bless you. Thanks for joining us for this morning's word. I really pray that this blesses somebody. And I, I hope to see you soon for another morning word.